Hello everyone and welcome to the virtual gas chromatography and fractional distillation lab. At the start of this lab you will receive an equimolar solution of two compounds. Make sure you write down the unknown number. Start by recording the initial volume of your unknown. You'll want to transfer your unknown back to the vial to prevent unnecessary evaporation. Make sure you cap it. You will then analyze your unknown sample via gas chromatography. This technique will help us identify our unknown compounds and later will help us determine the percent composition of our fractions. When we inject the sample into the instrument, the compounds will travel through a long column where they'll separate. Each peak on the chromatogram represents a different compound. To analyze the chromatogram, you'll want to take the integration of each peak. This will give us the area for each peak, which we can then use to calculate the percent composition of the solution. Since our solution is equimolar, we should expect to see that the areas of the peaks are the same, or at least relatively similar. Each compound will then elute at a specific time called the retention time. The retention time is recorded as the highest point of the peak. You can also see this in the table as the highest potential. Record the retention time of each peak as this will let us identify the compounds present. We will then compare the retention times of our two unknown compounds to a set of standard retention times. The standard contains the retention times of the seven possible compounds you might encounter in today's lab. Make a table in your notebook that consists of the potential compounds, their boiling points, and the retention times. We will now begin the fractional distillation portion of the lab. A microscale glassware set has been provided. Assemble your distillation apparatus and take extra caution when inserting the thermometer through the septum. Hold the thermometer an inch from the end and twist to insert. Make sure the thermometer bulb sits just below the sidearm to ensure an accurate boiling point reading. Add one to two boiling stones to ensure a smooth and even boil. Now here we will transfer our unknown to the boiling flask. Transfer with a pasture pipette is highly recommended. Now we attach our boiling flask to the bottom of the fractionating column and make sure it is attached securely. As we heat the boiling flask, adjust the sand around it. The more sand that comes in contact with the flask, the more heat will be imparted into it. Manipulate the sand to adjust the drop rate of your distillation. Once the condensation ring moves up the column and reaches the thermometer bulb, you'll see a spike in temperature. Now we begin to see our liquid distill. Here we see our first drop come off the distillation apparatus. Use this thermometer reading as your first data point. If the drop rate is too fast, remove some of the sand from around the flask. Continue recording the temperature after every five drops. During this section of the video, make sure you record the temperature every time the camera pans to the thermometer.
When your temperature has risen eight degrees Celsius or more from your initial drop temperature, switch the vials and begin collecting your fraction two. Cover your fraction one and place on ice to prevent evaporation. Continue recording temperatures and drops. Be sure to continue the same table you used in fraction one so there is no break in the data. We will then plot the drops versus temperature data using Excel after we have completed the data collection. Be sure to have your x-axis labeled as drops and your y-axis as the temperature. We'll record our final temperature, and since our boiling flask is almost dry, we'll remove it from heat. Now we will measure the volume of both of our fractions. Here, we are measuring the volume of fraction 1. Pour the fraction back into the vial to save it for GC analysis. Since gas chromatography is a sensitive technique, we'll want to avoid contamination between the fractions. Make sure the graduated cylinder is dry using a stream of air in between measurements. Now we measure our fraction 2 volume. We'll then take both of our fractions and analyze them via gas chromatography. We'll start with our first fraction.
On the chromatogram, we'll see that our first fraction has been enriched with the lower boiling point compound. We'll record the retention time and the area of the peaks, just like before. Using the areas of the peaks, we'll figure out the percent composition of the mixture. To do this, we'll take a peak area and divide it by the sum of both peak areas. Multiply it by 100 to get your percent composition of that compound. Next, we'll analyze our fraction two. Notice in our fraction two that the higher boiling point compound has been enriched. Record the retention times and peak areas like before to analyze the percent composition. Be sure to include all chromatograms with your report along with your Excel graph. Thanks for watching.